Hey you guys, what is going on? My name is Marcus and you're watching Roads Untraveled. Today is a very special Sunday episode where I'm going to talk a little bit about my love-hate relationship with my Toyota MR2 Turbo second generation. One of the things I love about the second generation MR2 is the looks of the car. When you see this car on the side of the road, parked up next to you know, the other Japanese cars of the era. It looks exotic and you could definitely tell the Italian influences of the era. And that's kind of what made it get its nickname, the poor man's Ferrari. I can totally see the resemblance between this and let's say an F355 Ferrari. Uh, not exactly, I mean, it's still definitely a Toyota and it has Toyota design cues all over it. But in terms of looks, I just think it looks fantastic. There's side scoops. You've got the rear deck lid back there that's really unique. You don't really see any other mid-engine cars like this on the road. And for that, I really like the MR2. It really stands out in my eyes. One of its small drawbacks is, without a doubt, the fuel economy. I mean, for a two-liter engine, a four-cylinder engine, you'd expect this thing to be like pretty good on the highway, maybe a little worse in the city when you're in boost and whatnot. But when you're in and out of boost and you're going on a like hard Sunday drive, you're driving the car hard, it just sucks down fuel. It just screams like, oh, hey, look at me. I'm not a small engine. I can drink fuel just like the big V8s. Well, it's gonna do that. And you're definitely gonna notice a difference from when you're just driving on a highway, cruising at 60, 70 miles an hour versus rowing through the gears in the twisties with your friends. Another thing I love about the MR2 is the engine. So basically, it's got a very strong mid-range power band which is what I love about driving this thing as a daily driver. Now, it does rev just past 7,000 RPM, peak power is at 6,000 RPM, and peak torque is at 4,000 RPM. So what you get is a really torquey engine down in the mid-range, and then when you really want to ring it out, you can, but you never really feel like you have to, which is one of my favorite traits about this engine. It spools up nice and quick, but at the same time, it's got enough turbo lag that really just makes it exciting to drive. And I really enjoy turbos for that very reason. Turbo leg isn't all that bad unless it's just completely unbearable and you just can't use the car. The MR2 is not like that. It's very usable. Turbo spools up nice and quick. In stock form, I mean, it's a really a blast to drive. Another thing that only some people will notice about the MR2, and definitely after two years of owning MR2s, I've had two of them, two MR2 turbos, um, you will notice the car does get a little bit of heat soak when you're really pushing it hard. Now, you do have to be driving it hard for an extended period of time to notice the heat soak, but in stock form on kind of a summer day, even up here in Canada, you will definitely notice it. You'll notice a little loss of power and whatnot, just kind of general things you would expect uh, from a heat soaked turbocharged engine. This trait is particularly pronounced when we throw the camera on the front to get some camera shots and I'm trying to chase a 700 horsepower skyline through a mountain pass. That's when I really notice it. Now, the normal MR2 driver might not notice it, but I've definitely come across a few heat soak issues with the MR2 in the past. It's definitely easily fixable in the aftermarket for a few hundred bucks. Uh, radiator, intercooler, just better airflow into the engine compartment, but in stock form, you can definitely notice it. All right, so one of my very favorite things about the MR2 Turbo is just the driver input, the steering and the shifting in particular. In terms of a stock car, the steering feel of the MR2 Turbo is really something to write home about. I've driven a lot of cars before, American cars, European cars, other Japanese cars of this era, and in terms of the steering not being over boosted, no looseness or play in the steering, it's really a joy to take around the twisties and to throw around. You don't feel like you have any lack of control at any point when you're driving the car. It's really a good steering system. And as well, the shifter. In terms of stock shifting feel, I have yet to come across another car in stock form that shifts as nicely as this car. Other cars that are modified, sure, they have much better shifting feel, but in stock form, the MR2 Turbo is just absolutely phenomenal. All right, so one of the downsides of the MR2 is the lack of real usable storage space. Now, I gotta tell you, for being a mid-engine car and having the engine and the entire drivetrain right behind you, it's got a decent amount of space. 
But then you start thinking to yourself, well, in this time period, the mid to late 90s, what could you get out of Japan that was competing with this car? Well, Nissan 300ZX, Eclipse, RX-7, Skyline, Silvia, all of those cars have way more storage space in them. The MR2 does have what you would call a frunk up front, but it's not like a Ferrari where it's all nice and carpeted and you've got, you could fit like a couple backpacks in there. I mean, your spare tires there, your batteries there. But I guess the way I see it, when you're buying a car like this, you're not buying it for the storage space. But if you were to compare it to other cars that this is kind of put up against in the time period, it doesn't have all that much space. All right, so one of my favorite things about the MR2 is just the size of the car. It's a really good size for what it is. It's not too small that you're gonna get really uncomfortable in here or that you're gonna be very cramped in the car when you're driving. It's got plenty of space on the inside, yet when you're taking it in the corners, it's small enough that on your favorite B-Road, you can actually place the car really well and kind of make your own driving line wherever you wanna go. You know exactly where the front wheels are, you know exactly where the rear wheels are, you're right in the middle of the car, and it's just a blast to throw around the lane. Really awesome car to take in the corners, for sure. One of the things about the MR2 Turbo that I don't like very much is the wind noise. When you're kind of going above 120, 130 kilometers an hour, you do get a lot of wind noise. Uh, from both mirrors and when the pop-up headlights are up it just destroys the aerodynamics of the car now I don't know if that is Contributing to any of that wind noise, but you certainly notice the wind noise when you're on a long drive And it can definitely get on your nerve if that's something that bugs you a lot Which for me it's not a deal breaker because I love the driving dynamics of the MR2, but it is definitely something to take note of So you're probably watching this video and being like well Marcus you guys upload on Tuesdays and Thursdays Why is there a video on Sunday? Well, not to worry, we've still got a video coming on Tuesday and Thursday. This is just an extra little video that we decided to shoot. And occasionally on Sundays, that's what you're gonna get from now on. So, hope you enjoyed this quick look at my love-hate relationship with my MR2 Turbo. And we'll be back on Tuesday with another episode of Roads and Travel. See you guys then.